Hello, hello. This is Coach Ingram, and welcome to this video in the thermochemistry unit. This is the standard heat of formation. It's very short, sweet, to the point, um, and also very sensible. So, heat of formation is going to be the change in heat that accompanies the formation of one mole of a compound from its elements. And all the substances have to be in their standard states at 25 degrees Celsius. So the first kind of rule of thumb for this is that anytime you're dealing with the um, heat of formation of a free element, so for example, sodium or O2, so if it's diatomic, it's allowed to be diatomic, in its standard state, it's always going to be a value of zero. You don't have to memorize you know, each individual element's you know, value, it's always going to be zero. If it's not a free element and it's a compound, we are going to be giving you the values for the heat of formation for that particular compound. Again, the number of moles of each substance in the balanced reaction has to be multiplied by the known value. So for example, if in your chemical reaction you have two moles of something, you have to multiply that heat of formation by two moles. And essentially we're giving you another way to calculate enthalpy. This is just another way of looking at change in H. So let's go ahead and do an example problem. So your change in enthalpy overall is going to be the heat of formation for your products minus the heat of formation for your reactant. So when I do it, I'm going to put everything that's a reactant inside brackets and everything that's a product inside brackets. And that's just how I keep it straight. And remember, all your products, these are going to be summed. So you're going to add together all your products and you're also going to be summing together all of your reactants. So the first example problem says to calculate the standard heat of reaction for this reaction. So, if I want to know delta H, I'm going to expand my page here. There we go. So, we know that delta H is going to be equal first to the product. So, I'm going to put in brackets. So, here are my two products. We've got this one and this one. Both of them are one mole. So, let's go down here. We can see our given values right down here for our um, formations for each of these compounds. We've got um, calcium oxide um, is going to be negative 635.1. You know we only have one mole of it, so that's going to be negative 635.1. We have to add together our other product, which is carbon dioxide, which is negative 393.5. Those are all of our products, so I can bracket it out. And then remember, I have to subtract out my reactants, and I'm going to put it below it because I'm running out of room here. I'm going to subtract out my reactants. I have calcium carbonate up here, and there's only one mole of it, so it's just going to be the value at negative 1207.0. And then from there, all you do is the algebra. So if you go ahead and, and, and work that out, you're going to get 178.4 kilojoules, and that's the enthalpy of your reaction. Easy peasy. Let's try another one. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can do it on your own. All right, now we're back. Let's look at what we've got going on here. We've got hydrogen gas, we've got oxygen gas, and it's creating um, water gas, um, so water vapor. Um, so let's see, let's see what we got here. We've got change in H equals our product, so I'm going to put my bracket. My product is H2O. I'm given my value for the heat of formation for H2O gas, and keep in mind, and this really should have a G right here. You always, always want to make sure that you um, keep the, the states of or the phase changes in the state of matter consistent all the way through. You wouldn't want to put on accident the H2O liquid value in for that. You want to make sure it's the gas. But do note that we've got a 2 here, which means it has to be multiplied by 2. So I'm going to take that negative um, 241.8 kilojoules per mole, and I'm going to times it by 2. So I've got negative 241.8. That's my products. Then I'm going to subtract out my two reactants. I've got two um, H2s. Note that that's a diatomic element, um, and it's by itself. So that's going to be two times zero, plus one times also zero. Because remember, all elements, diatomic, single elements, by themselves are always going to be zero. So actually, that makes this entire piece right here zero. So that makes this incredibly easy. So when we actually go ahead and do the math, you're going to work it out to negative 483.6 kilojoules. Now just note that you can actually do this. I could give you the enthalpy of a reaction. You could, you could solve for one of the specific heat of formations. You could also do any of these backwards. But that's as complicated as it gets. The more 
products and reactants that you have, obviously the more you have to put into the equation and the more math you have to do. And my advice to you would be to always write it out. Always make sure you notate um, how many moles you have. Always make sure you write everything, um, especially when you're dealing with these negatives and you're times them by negatives and subtracting things out. Just writing everything. The more you write out, the less mistakes you're likely to make. Okay, so there's one other way that we can look at the overall enthalpy of a reaction, and that's by looking at the bond energies in our products and our reactants. So if, for example, we want to break a covalent bond between two atoms, we're going to need to overcome the attractive force that's in that bond. And so bond breaking is going to be an endothermic process. The opposite is going to be true if you want to make a new bond. So if you're building new bonds and making them, energy is going to be released, and therefore bond making is going to be exothermic. And it's imperative that you know these two concepts and understand the difference between them in order to solve these problems. So bond breaking is endothermic. You are taking in energy to break a bond. But when you make a bond, you are releasing energy. So when you do these problems, you're going to need uh, some sort of chart or reference in order to figure out what the individual energies for each bond are. And this is an example of one that we're going to use um, on this particular slideshow. So if you see kind of at the top, we've got our single bond energies, and then we have multiple bonds down here for your reference as well. So for example, if you've got carbon and hydrogen, which we are going to use in a second, that's 413 kilojoules per mole. So if you go ahead and break a carbon and hydrogen bond, that's going to be a positive 413 kilojoules per mole. If you are making a carbon to hydrogen bond, one bond, it's going to be uh, negative 413 kilojoules per mole. And the same is true for the multiple bonds down here at the bottom. If you've got a double double bond or carbon bond, double bond is 614, triple bond is 839. And if you noticed up here, a single bond for carbon carbon is 348. You can see the trend, um, which we've talked about with bonding in the past. If you, if you have double and triple bonds, they are going to be stronger, have more energy. Okay. So let's go ahead and do an example problem uh, using this concept. The question says, what is the enthalpy change of the reaction when hydrogen is added to ethyne to produce ethane? And we're given a uh, equation here that we can use. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually draw out my equation using, using Lewis dot surfaces so that I can see what bonds I'm working with and I can count them. This is super handy, especially when it comes in to play with uh, double bonds and triple bonds. So if I'm going to draw um, my reactant side over here, I'm going to work reactants on the left, products on the right. So I'm going to say ethyne looks like this. Triple bond, we've got carbon and then a hydrogen. And my hydrogen gas, we've got, we've got a hydrogen, hydrogen, but then we have two moles of it, so we're going to have two of those. And then on my react, or my product side, excuse me, I'm going to have carbon, carbon and six hydrogen. So this is where Lewis dot structure knowledge comes in handy. So now I can go ahead and count all of the different um, types of bonds that I have. So on this left hand side, I've got um, on my reaction side, I've got two carbon hydrogen bonds. And if I look right on the previous page, so if you want to pause and scroll back, you can see that is 430 kilojoules per mole, and I have two of them. So if I multiply two times 413, I get 826. Then I've got one carbon, triple bond carbon, and that's going to be one times 839. So I'm going to put that over here. And then I've got two hydrogen, hydrogen bonds, and that's going to end up being two times 436, 872. So remember, when I'm breaking bonds, I am taking in energy. It is endothermic. So when I make, or sorry, break all three of these bonds, it ends up being 2537 kilojoules. And remember, that is going to be a positive number. And I have to notate it since it's not in an equation. I'm notating that it is positive. It is, in fact, an endothermic process to break all the bonds on my reactant side. On my product side, if I go over to the right, I've got one carbon, single bond carbon, which is going to be 348. And I've got six carbon hydrogen, which is going to be 2,478. And remember, these are both going to be negative 
because this side, when we're making bonds, it's exothermic, it's releasing all this energy, and you get negative 28.26. So if I've got what it took to put into the equation right here to break the bonds, and then what came out of it when I made the bonds, I'm going to find my total overall enthalpy change is going to be when I add these two together. You have to keep the signs with them. So overall, I'm going to get negative 289 kilojoules per mole. So my overall enthalpy of the reaction is going to be exothermic. It took more energy to make the bonds than it did to break them. So it released more energy making the bonds than it did taking in making them. And that's how you solve a problem using bond energies. Hopefully you took good notes and come into class with any questions and we will answer them best we can.